and put it across the front there to uh, cover that up really good and along the back and uh, like I say I'll set the camera down real quick and show you exactly what I'm talking about <music> What's up, y'all? It's Jeffrey back here at Flippin' Profit, and we got some orders to pull. So I sold these shoes back here. These are some women's Adidas uh, golfing shoes. I like how they don't really have a tongue to them. That's kind of cool. They were in pretty decent condition. I picked these up at a thrift store out of town for like uh, one or two bucks. They were definitely a lot dirtier than this. I had to clean up the leather a little bit, but um, had them listed for $18.77 with free shipping, and uh, someone came through and bought them for full price. So the next thing should be an A520. Here it is right here, A520. And these are some St. John's Bay Worry Free Pants for uh, men's classic fit pleated pants. Picked these up at the thrift store for about two or three bucks. Um, been sitting on the shelves for a while, been lowering the price over the past few months, and uh, finally got them sold for $18.77 with free shipping. So I was down here filming, pulling all this stuff, and my air conditioner kicked on outside. So I paused the camera, ran upstairs to turn it off, and uh, forgot to start recording when I came back down. <laughs> I pulled all these orders right here and uh, was sitting there filming and talking about them and everything, and then my camera turned off because, <laughs> because of the power save mode. And I was like, oh no. But either way, here, I'll show you what we got really quick. Um, yeah, we already went over those. Let's start back at the beginning. So this is another one of those bad buys, I guess. Uh, it's been a long time sitting on the shelves. It's just a regular plain blue, uh, you know, solid color blue shirt with the uh, polo logo on the front. And um, yeah, like I say, been sitting on the shelves for a while. I had it listed for, I think I started at maybe $17 or something and then slowly been bumping it down to uh, $15.77 and got an offer for twelve dollars so i went ahead and took it that's with free shipping and like i say polo brand does do pretty good they've got other style of shirts that sell pretty quick for me you, you don't get too much for them but like the polo golfs and this actual style of shirt with like the the linen 100 percent linen fabric is a real good one and then any of them that have the really big embroidered logos and stuff like that but either way i was glad to uh, go ahead and get that 12 bucks and get this sent out of here next thing we pulled were some levi's jogger pants i didn't even know levi's had jogger pants but uh yeah these are men's flat front tapered pants i think i picked these up for like two or three bucks at the thrift store had them listed for 18.77 with free shipping and uh kept getting a bunch of low ball offers so eventually settled for 16.50 with free shipping next thing we have are some levi's 512 jeans for women um what are these size 6m or 6pm petite medium uh but yeah Perfectly slimming boot cut jeans, nice uh, medium wash jeans, and uh, the 512 series from Levi's for uh, women's jeans are doing pretty good for me. So, ended up getting full asking price, $21.77 with free shipping. And then the item, the last item I pulled before my camera told me that I wasn't filming anything are the 7.7 premium denim jeans. Nice medium wash boot cut jeans. They've been sitting on the shelves for a while too. Um, I think I originally started them out at about 23 bucks, and have been slowly lowering the price by a dollar over the few months. And and it eventually got down to 17.77 with free shipping, and somebody bought them for full price. So glad to see those go. Something else that I sold, but I'm still waiting on payment for, is that uh, vintage Woolrich jacket. It's a nice fleece-lined uh, wool jacket. Very nice green and tan plaid on it. Uh, it's a pretty cool jacket. It had a few like small stains on it and stuff, but um, I originally had it listed for like 65 bucks because that's about how the other ones were going for. Um, but considering the staining and stuff, I imagined you know I would get some best offers and uh, would sell it for cheaper than that. And sure enough, somebody came in at about 40 bucks. I went back at them with 50. They came back with 45, and I accepted that offer. So. Sold these for 45 plus uh, or with free shipping, but um, like I said, still waiting on payment. If I have to, I'll send out a payment reminder, maybe reach out to them and ask them, you know, when can I be expecting payment and uh, hopefully get that sale. I think I picked that up for like six or seven bucks at the thrift store, so that would be a pretty good flip. And the last thing to pull today is this JVC VCR, and um, it was sitting right on the shelf over there. <laughs> One of the cats must have gotten in here and was walking on top of it, but that's okay. <clears throat> I got my cleaning products right there. I'll wipe this thing down as usual. I'll always wipe down my stuff before I ship it. But this was a bundle deal. I think I have a tape and some uh, AV cables to go with it. There they are. Well, normally I write on the bag the model number and the brand, but... <laughs> 
this one this is this is what goes with this but i forgot to write that on the bag but either way this is a bundle that i sold vcr with the free vhs blank tape and um some av cables didn't have the remote for it i uh, went ahead and listed it for like 45 dollars and 77 cents with free shipping and uh, took a best offer of 40 bucks with free shipping i only paid about five bucks for this at the thrift store and i'm going to show you real quick how i package it up and then we'll go upstairs and look at the different shipping rates so really quick i'll tell you how i'm going to wrap this in bubble wrap and then i'll set the camera down and show you but um so first thing i'm going to do is wrap it with this small bubble wrap give it a good like two rows of bubble wrap or that around that and then i'm going to grab these big bubbles uh oh i need to refill that it's all right i got some more in the back but um gonna get some big bubbles these are perforated squares every uh, one foot so I'll take three of these and then fold this in half long ways and put it across the front there to uh, cover that up really good and along the back and uh, like I say I'll set the camera down real quick and show you exactly what I'm talking about So there we go, got a nice uh, small bubble wrap around it, two layers of that, and then two layers of big bubble wrap around the uh, front and the back. And this will also give a nice little bit of uh, elevation in between the, uh, you know, the actual box and the item and stuff. And if you've ever bought a brand new VCR, the way that they put them in the box, they don't put bubble wrap or anything around it. They actually build, uh, you know, custom styrofoam. Uh, blocks that will go around the back and the front sometimes just in the corners and it's the same idea where it's elevating it in between you know a lot of space in between the uh, of the box and the uh, VCR so that even if the box does start to get crushed it would take a lot to uh, really damage it and then I just took one layer of the uh, that uh, one by two uh, small bubble wrap right there and wrapped up the AV cables in the uh, VHS tape in here. I'll throw some tape around this and uh, we'll get a box and uh, size this thing up. And the box we'll be using is the uh, Home Depot medium size box and this is the perfect box I like using for stuff like this, any VCR, DVD players and I know it looks way bigger for what we're going to use it for but that's actually going to help us because we're actually going to double up some of the cardboard in some areas um, because it's so big and it'll create even more protection for the item. So I got the bottom part of the box made up and first thing we're going to do is cut off these long flaps right here. So now that we cut these two pieces off of the sides right here, what we're going to do with them is actually set them in the bottom down here. They fit perfectly if you put them side by side, or well normally they fit perfectly. 
There we go. And that creates another nice layer of cardboard for the bottom. And then once we size this box up and uh, the, fold the top over, these uh, little side flaps are going to overlap each other and create another layer of cardboard for the top. And this VCR is a little bit smaller than most, so um, it does have a lot more space around it. We're going to go ahead and put this over in the side like that. And to fill in the rest of the space around the box, I like using this uh, ad paper. Uh, if you ask your uh, mailman, they usually always have a lot of this stuff left over when they're handing some out. And they'll give you a big, uh, big handful of it. So, And to me, this is perfect package filler. Find this newspaper-like paper, like this uh, Super One Food ad. Gonna crumble some of that up and pack it down on the sides. There we go. Got it all stuffed in around there. That thing is not going anywhere. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, take out another little piece of cardboard. Um, as you can see on my marks on this one, I've used this one over and over again. But we're going to use this as like a ruler or whatnot, a little judgment stick. And place it at the highest point on the item down in the box. And hold it up into the corner. And and looks like for this box it's actually going to be right above that red line. So what I'm going to do is now take my knife and start at the bottom and come all the way up. And then when I change corners, I'm gonna use that red line to gauge um, how far down I should go on this side of the box and all the way around to each corner. So just like that, we've got all four corners cut all the way down to about the top of the item. And that way we can make new folds and you know cover this up the way it should be so the next thing I'm gonna do though you don't have to do this um, one thing that helps me is I have this type of knife where I can barely stick the blade out but I'm gonna use this piece of cardboard kinda hold it a flat across the uh, top of the item here and try to make a very small score line going across the side here and the reason I'm doing that so I'm not, I'm not really cutting the box, I'm just trying to put a small line in it to help. So once I try to fold this over, it will fold right where I put that small line. And I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. But like I said, if you don't want to do this, if you're afraid you might cut through the box, um, start with the two sides that are closest to your item, because it's going to be easier to get it to fold right at the top of the item, um, rather than how much space there is in between here and there. So now I've got both these sides folded down and it's right above the top of the item so it's got it nice and packed in there tight. And I can now use this as a guide to uh, make my scores, uh, my little small lines on these two uh, flaps right here. So there we go, we've got a nice folded box perfect fit for this item it's on it very tight bubble wrap and everything's holding up good so this is a nice packaged item the last thing I'm gonna do here is as you can see even after we cut off those flaps earlier I knew that we were gonna cut this box down so much that there would still be some overlapping and I'm gonna do what's called I think it's called like a double cut once again you don't have to do this if you don't want to you could just tape it up as it is but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this do a little double cut and make this seem nice and flush so Got my blade barely sticking out, and the goal is I'm going to try to cut through this flap and this flap with one line. So that once I take away this piece and the piece under there, it'll be a nice, these two flaps will come together nice and flush. You'll see what I'm talking about. So just like that, now these flaps come perfectly seamless on top, just like it was brand new. So I can tape this up now, we'll get those measurements and weight, and uh, figure out the shipping rates. One more tip for you guys, if you're using a scale like this and your box is going to be so big that it might cover up the, uh, the actual weight so you can't see it, if you look right here it says hold and it's got an arrow. This button over here, when you have something on top of it, if you hit that button, it will hold the weight. So then you can remove the item and see how much it weighs. So like right now, it's on top of the scale. Nothing else is touching it, um, but I can't see it. So I'm going to reach under here, hit that button. It makes a little beep. 
and now we can see it weighs nine pounds and about six ounces and after measuring it it's going to be about 22 inches by 17 by 7. so this item will be shipping to california which is a far distance and after going to ebay shipping page putting in the weight and dimensions my best price is going to be fedex home delivery for twenty dollars and six cents the next best thing would be fedex smart post for twenty five dollars and then priority mail gets outrageous at almost $45. So that would be more than what I got for the item. So definitely go with FedEx when you're uh, trying to ship big items. And because of the distance and the weight was a little bit more than I expected, um, this was a little bit more shipping to pay than I expected. But if you check out my phone right here, I'm on the Seller Profit Calculator app. I went ahead and punched everything in and we still made a total of $10.20 profit. So that's pretty good in my book. I mean, $10 profit, we uh, took $5, made it into 10 doubled our profit so that's going to be it for today's video y'all hit that like button if you enjoyed it also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell and if you're new to my channel and you want more tips on how to sell on ebay then check out some of my playlists thank you so much to each and every one of you for watching my videos and until i see y'all next time keep flipping